what shall we say? Uh, there may be smiling faces, but I know everyone as Christians who have the same uh, heart now as Jesus Christ, full of compassion. Right now, our hearts are lamenting and mourning over what's going on around the world. Yeah. Because as Christians, we don't live anymore as mentioned by Apostle Paul in the book of Romans 4.17. We no longer live on ourselves alone. We live for the Lord, we will die for the Lord, and when we say we live for Him, we live also for our brothers and sisters. And uh, now is the closing of the love month, February, mm -hmm. and uh, this is so timely that the Lord is leading us to put into practice what we have learned from the previous preachings about love. What really is it to love? So we don't merely love by words, but this is the very practical moment that we are to practice our love. As he said in uh, John 3, I think 3.34, when he said that, as I love you, you must love also one another. And uh, to show love to our brothers, especially those who are in Ukraine and Russia, um, maybe we cannot go there physically, but we know that our prayers are so powerful that uh, it can break the stronghold, whatever among the officials are holding them strongly to to send out war like that. But of course, Christians, as Jesus said, do not be alarmed, do not panic. Um, just put your peace unto the Lord because really these things will really come. It is no surprise anymore. He said in Matthew 24, I think in 6, 7, that what we are seeing and witnessing right now, rumors of war and war itself, nations against nations are rising up against each other, mm -hmm. it will really come. Mm -hmm. And it must come, as it has told, and what has been told will really happen. Mm -hmm. But what the Lord is always saying, stand firm, my brothers and sisters. Mm -hmm. And as we stand yeah. firm, there's an accountability among us. Each and every one is accountable and responsible for even to them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Amen. And our prayers are very powerful. So what's our accountability now? We are ought now to surrender our lives, my brothers and sisters, because we know that the prayer of the righteous is powerful and effective. So let's all be blameless prayer warriors. There is a call now to be very serious so that our prayer all together will be powerful and will break the stronghold that's what's going on right now. There's so many... <laughs> Here says maybe so many um, brilliant minds coming out about <laughs> geopolitics, <laughs> politics, allies. But we are Christians already and we're depending on the Lord. Mm -hmm. And we don't need help from anyone. Mm -hmm. Not even the word, even to the superpowers. But even the Lord himself has said in his words, Our help comes from God, mm -hmm. Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. In everything that was going on right now, maybe there could be war, there could be uh, chaos here and there, my brothers and sisters. It's not about the worldly happenings, but everything that is going on right now, in the physical, in the natural that we are seeing by our naked eyes, are all bottom line connected to the spiritual, to the heavenlies, and the... Uh, as Jesus said, walang mga bagay na nangyayari sa buhay ng tao maging sa mundo na hindi sa kanyang kapahintulutan. So in everything, we praise the Lord. But mm -hmm. in this moment, putting ourselves in the shoes of those being affected, are we able to still praise the Lord? Mm -hmm. There are battles really right now. It's a spiritual battle. It's deep, but uh, no matter how deep it is, we know that uh, we can already comprehend because we have given the Lord with the deep depth of His understanding yeah. and knowledge by His Word. So we praise them. So if there is war going on there, there could be war also going on right at your very heart could be. Mm. Right in your very family. 
why it could be in this place, we don't know. So battle po not just be seen elsewhere, but uh, sometimes an individual has his own battle. Sometimes he's just quiet, he's not just so uh, outspoken about it, but there could be battle or war going on inside him. So we should be sensitive as well with our brothers and sisters. We don't know, others have come here broken. Others could be coming here, isang storm na lang, gigive up na. We don't know. He may be okay in the physical without ward appearance. But there could be shaking inside. But we praise the Lord always. We are being strengthened by His words. All the preachings and biblical sermons that we hear from then up to now, long time ago up to now, it always talks about standing firm. What the Lord is saying to us, let these things not move you. Endure, persevere, hold fast. Let's put this into action. And uh, that could be tested when times like this testing and trials come. Okay? So my brothers and sisters, tonight the Lord just want to lead us to Standing firm, reminding us, but in the attitude of gratitude or thanksgiving. Okay. Mm-hmm. So we are we we are taking our main text tonight from one of the teachings of Apostle Paul in the book of Second Thessalonians. But if we know Paul in his teachings, he loves to speak about thanksgiving, mm-hmm. and so this is very familiar. But we ought always ought you will feel the the demand of it you ought you should you need to when how often how frequent always what but we ought always to thank god how often we thank god but we ought always to thank god for you brothers loved by the lord because from the beginning god chose you to be saved through the sanctifying work of the Spirit and through belief in the truth. The truth, the belief in the gospel. He called you to this true our gospel that you might share in the glory of our Lord Jesus Christ. So then, brothers, stand firm and hold to the teachings we passed on to you, whether by word of mouth or by letter. May your name alone be praised through the reading of your word, God, in Jesus' name. Amen. So my brothers and sisters, so we will see here that there is an instruction of the Lord to all of us as we stand firm, that we should always be having this lifestyle of always thanking the Lord. And uh, this is not so new anymore to JSBC because... We are really inspired by the brethren who are really deeply rooted already by the Word of God. So we are hearing testimonies of anniversaries of wedding, um, opening new chapter of life in marriage, but we also heard the true, uh, true or the realities of loved ones passing away. And others, we have heard from testimony in prayer meeting. We have a sister. Um, whose baby uh, was not pursued from the tummy. Amen? So, there, there could be loneliness in that part, could be. Amen? And others are going through different trials. But here they are. They are praising the Lord in testimony and giving thanks. So, we are obeying the will of the Lord in our lives. This is very common as well when he said in First Thessalonians, very common, chapter 5, verse 18, when he said, to give thanks, in all circumstances. Whether good or bad, we give, give thanks. Same as Ephesians 5.20, there's the frequency of giving thanks. When Apostle Paul said, always giving thanks to God the Father for everything in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. So we will see. In the teachings of Apostle Paul, he is always linking the thanking of the Lord to standing firm. It is part. They go hand in hand. When you stand firm, then you are um, giving acknowledgement and thanksgiving to the Lord. But how can we, what is the key maybe, to deeply give thanks to the Lord and to stand firm? 
given different situations in life. So let's go back again and again to our text. What are the things that Apostle Paul is so thankful about? Now he came to this text and so of uh, many texts about thanksgiving because he has known God from the beginning in the Old Testament, for example. The book of Leviticus is telling about Exodus, Leviticus is telling about thanksgiving offering. A lot to be offered to the Lord in due to the Lord and they bring it out through their thanksgiving. Came the servants of the Lord, David, Nehemiah, they're all thanking the Lord after they came to psalms and many songs and praises giving thanks to the Lord. Even our Lord Jesus Christ giving thanks to the Father many times. Always in his prayers, I give thanks to you, my Father. Deeply in his knees, he's uttering cries of thanksgiving to his Father. When he was about to be crucified and he was betrayed still, Jesus gave thanks to the Lord. Lord, thank you, even to his last breath. When he healed lepers, we remember, he is looking and longing for those who will give thanks. So giving thanks is part of our role model's life, Jesus Christ. So even Apostle Paul is acknowledging giving thanks as part of his life. But what's the difference? The church should live also by which type of thanksgiving? What are the things that Apostle Paul, even Jesus, is thanking God so much for? We can hear, read here, he is very thankful for the love by the Lord. So he is very thankful. First, he is and we are loved by the Lord. Next, we were chosen by the Lord. Next, we were saved through the sanctifying work of the Holy Spirit and through the gospel by the Lord. And many more. In the 14, we can see more of what Paul wants to thank. He's thanking for also that he has called us through the gospel. So the saving grace, the calling, the choosing to us is what he is very much thankful. Mm -hmm. And that's the call for us, my brothers and sisters. Christians, yeah, we are thanking for the blessing. I am so blessed, put it in the, my day. I'm so blessed for this blessing. But we are not any more of the temporal things that we know could fade and could um, could come anytime. We are more of the deep things about God. Yes. The salvation and the saving grace of the Lord, the forgiveness of the Lord, this is what we can always be thankful for more than anything else in this world that fade. So my brothers and sisters, that is one of the um, shall we say uh, the importance of what we are thanking for the Lord the, here are there listed and uh, what are the motivations of our thanksgiving again more than the material things and more than the wealth riches health and everything that this world can offer may we always see always the beauty of the Lord what the Lord has done. And everything that we may use to be thankful for, physical things, could just be secondary. But more, we thank the Lord for all these gifts since we were referring to the Lord last week about gifts. But, you know, my brothers and sisters, the real test of our thanksgiving to the Lord is when you come to the point that you don't expect like, you know, you're expecting for a baby in your womb, and all of a sudden, the Lord allowed that it won't happen. So how's your thanksgiving then to the Lord? And how's your worshiping to the Lord? Will that be affected? Will you still give thanks to the Lord? When difficult times are happening, happening to you that you don't expect, especially painful part of our lives and the life of our loved ones, are we still able to give thanks to the Lord? I just would like to commend uh, earlier we heard a sister testifying about her father's passing on the day she testified about it my father 
passed away and she cried out loud and she was mourning. The following day I was speaking with her and all the congregation was witnessing it. She was full of ha 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 and <laughs> rejoicing. <laughs> Where is she getting that? She has that deep understanding of what life is all about. Seasons of life really comes. There is seasons of joy, seasons of mourning, but at the end of the day, the Lord appointed it to happen. We will just give thanks in all circumstances. Mm -hmm. So what's the implication now? So we know the importance of thanking the Lord, just like how Paul acknowledged the importance of it. I mean, even Jesus Christ has acknowledged the importance of thanking the Lord. Mm -hmm. And what we are thanking the Lord, we are deeply focused on this, not any more of the things around us. We thank the Lord for the deep things about God. Amen. And the implication is this. So what's now? It is written in the book of Ephesians. Let's take a look. <laughs> Ephesians 4.22 You were taught with regard to your former way of life. If before, what is your focus? And uh, where is your thanksgiving directed to? Now, um, the preaching of the Lord may be as simple as this, but to put it into practice is the real call of it. Putting off your old self, which is being corrupted by its deceitful desires. So what is to put off? So if you were not so thankful, not full of gratitude before, it is now time to be grateful for of the Lord. How often are we, my brothers and sisters, thanking the Lord? And uh, when are you the most thankful for the Lord? If you are receiving a slight blessing, maybe, or not so um, extravagant blessing, do you notice yourself different from receiving a grand blessing? It should not be not, my brothers and sisters. Put off that. And instead, you know, when you don't acknowledge much of what the Lord is doing, there could be something like grumbling in our hearts. We need to put that off. Philippians 2, Apostle Paul is also saying about what is in our hearts that we need to put off. Philippians 2, do everything without complaining or arguing. Amen. Sometimes, you know, the Lord said, answer to our prayers would not be as what we're expecting. So, the thanksgiving is slightly not as solid as what we should give. So that you may become blameless and pure, so you should not be grumbling or complaining, children of God, as you hold out the word of God, in order that I may boast on the day of Christ that I did not run or labor for nothing. So, I just want to say, my brothers and sisters, that we should not be complaining or grudging, maybe not in the physical or outwardly, but since we're not so acknowledging what the Lord is answering in our prayers or what He is allowing to do in our lives, and we are not that thank thankful and full of gratitude, children of God. So earlier, we have heard that we should not be, that we should put off this, and what we should put on. Put on the life full of thanksgiving. Amen. Where do we get it? Colossians 2, 7. If you are deeply rooted with the word of God, understanding of the many things that the Lord has done, more than that you could imagine. Sometimes the people, we should not be anymore. Limited to the physical things that our eyes could see. But all the more, the peace in our heart that surpass all understanding. Amen despite what's going on around us, that's something grateful that we should be thankful. Why would you thank the Lord? Because you have much more on your hand than the things that you have lost. When you look at those things, what you have done, what you have lost, you can praise the Lord and rejoice. This is encouragement, my brothers and sisters, in order for us to pour out the thanksgiving despite what's going on in our life. We should all be rooted and built up in Him. Him meaning in His words. Strengthened in the faith as you were taught and overflowing with thankfulness. Mm -hmm. To be firmly rooted 
will come out the life that is so thankful. Amen. So let's put this in analogy, my brothers and sisters. For example, may occasion. Uh, let's put occasion, uh, may kasal, kahap. Uh, natanggap notebook. For example, ay, kasal namin natanggap ko notebook. <laughs> For example, yung isang kapatid na uh, may kopon, but ito, natanggap ko. And then sabi ng conviction ng Holy Spirit with the life of your partner, pasalamat ko sa nagbigay. Oh, sige, thank you sa panahot mo. For example. Okay. <laughs> is it thanks? Is it thanksgiving and full of thankfulness? My brothers and sisters, it's not. It's out of obedience and politeness. <laughs> but what is really the thanksgiving that the Lord is looking after. Kasal, binigyan ng something grande. Plato, um, ano yung tano? Tano, wala. Kamuhayang showcase. Ay, grano, kausal na to whatsoever, grande. Ay, nagpo uma po ang pasasalamat sa Lord at pagluhod pa, magpray sa thank you sa buhay mo. Salamat Lord sa buhay na nagbigay. Amen. To the point na mapapalad ka pa papaiyak. My brothers and sisters, it is the kind of thanksgiving that the Lord is looking after the hearts of those who are uh, being called by the Lord. No matter how small the gift of God is to our life, it is a part of, should be, um, a life that is full of gratitude. Again, we will not go far. We always hear the story of the ten lepers healed by the Lord, right? That the Lord looked for one, uh, looked for the ten who were healed. Actually, the nine were rejoicing. And what are they rejoicing about? They're so thankful of the healing, of the mercy, of the gift from the Lord. But that one who came before the feet of Jesus Christ, humbly, without crying in his heart after he being him is what the Lord is looking for. So the Lord is looking for the heart that is coming to him not about the gifts or the healing grace or the blessing that the Lord has given him but thanking so much of the giver of the very Lord who is the source of everything like the healing that the lepers have received. So, we have a newcomer tonight, and maybe others. I'm not sure how, how thankful you are every day. Amen. What could be the reason why you are not so thankful of the Lord? I may definitely say, as per experience, and as per the, the lives of those who are coming in worship no matter what, no matter what sacrifice they ought to give for the sake of the Lord, maybe you have not found really the joy of the presence of the Lord. Maybe you have not come yet to the true knowledge of who Jesus Christ is. Maybe you have not really encountered the sanctifying, the forgiving grace of our Lord. Maybe earlier in the song, I have tasted and seen what the Lord has done in me, more than the blessing and the physical things being blessed to me. But maybe you have not come to encounter the life himself. And that's Jesus. But tonight, to the help of the Holy Spirit that we lift up, I know that there is a change of your heart right now. And through the gospel that we have heard, just like Paul, you are pouring out your heart with thanksgiving and that will be now your lifestyle. More than anything else that you are receiving, but more you are grateful to the deep things that the Lord has done in your life. And I guarantee you, if you are not thankful right now, you will be thankful. Because the message is spe specifically for you and me. Let's go back again to the message and let us change to make it personal to you and me. Let us change it into your name. But we ought always to thank God for you, Marlene. Brothers, mind and love by the Lord, because from the beginning, God has chosen you, my lips, to be saved through the sanctifying work of the Spirit and through the belief in the truth. 14. He called you, my lips, 
So this true our gospel that you Marlene, might share in the glory of our Lord Jesus Christ. 15. So then Marlene is Stanford. So Brother Sam, no matter what Stanford, Sister Sarah is Stanford, Sister Marilyn is Stanford, and hold to the teachings our preachers, our leaders, our former bishop Ray has passed on to us, whether by word of mouth or by letter. The brothers and sisters that we are practice, that acknowledging the deep things of God, the highly favor that the Lord has given us, you know, we deserve punishment, we know that. We deserve not to be enjoying like this full of freedom, but the Lord has done something great in the cross of Calvary. Yeah. And when you always cherish that, definitely there will be no moment in your life that you will not be thankful to. You not just be uttering of thankfulness, but to the point that you will come kneeling before Him at all times, whenever there is chance. And whenever there is chance for you to come into encounter to the Lord, you will choose Him. You will sacrifice whatever and you will deny whatever about yourself is. Because that is the result and the outpouring outcome of your thanksgiving in your life. Even living a life that is not worthy before the eyes of the Lord, you will come to the point that you will be not denying it. And you will come to the passion that you want to, to embrace a life blameless now. And you will choose a life that is pleasing to the Lord out of your deep gratitude to the Lord. And again, to stand fair has connection to your attitude of thanksgiving and gratitude to the Lord, my brothers and sisters. So again, whatever may happen, there will be war far or here in our own very hearts, in our very own family, we will not look up to that. We will continue to give praise to the Lord because in everything God is sovereign, He is allowing, but of course He is teaching as well. For us all, prayer warriors, even to the nations of the world, they should know. Second Chronicles 7, 14, the Lord is longing, the Lord is crying out, that if my people, if my Ukraine people, if my Russian people, if my American people, if my Filipinos all over the world will humble themselves, will cry out to the Lord, will turn out from their wickedness, will come back to the Lord with full surrender, I, the Lord, the sovereign God said, I myself will come to you, will hear your cries, will answer your prayer, will heal your land. As we listen. So my brothers and sisters, let's all be matured in the faith. Amen. Not shallow. But let's always acknowledge just like Paul the deep things about God. Hallelujah. And we give praise to the Lord. And in prayer all together. Father God, we thank you for tonight. We thank you once again for awakening our lives that could be so complacent when it comes to thanking you. But allow us at all times to acknowledge the great things that you have done in our lives that will bring us, Lord, to our knees, to thank you, to cry for you, to thirst for you, and thanksgiving, Lord God. We thank you. And as we stand firm in the faith, Lord God, hallelujah, apart from you, we cannot do this. So, thank you. Yeah! Yeah!